In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use the LFA Scene Manager Material System to export materials and shaders into Ogre 3D. Now, for anyone who's new to 3D art, the first thing I want to do is clarify two terms. The terms material, I'll open my hypershade, and texture. These two are not to be confused and are not interchangeable. When I say texture, um, I'm talking about a texture file. The actual image file that you made in Photoshop or GIMP. So I'm talking about a JPEG, a DXT, a Targa, etc. When I say material, I'm talking about a script or a Maya node that describes how a texture or textures are to be displayed over a surface. A material can use several textures and any particular texture can be used by any number of materials. So in the export tutorial, I showed you how to export geometry from the scene. Now I'm going to show you how to use the LFA tools to make it look however you want. So if we only export raw geometry and try to load it up, it shows up blank. So let's solve this problem. The first thing we want to do is use a tool called File Texture Manager that I included for you here. This is one of the best Maya tools and I didn't write this one, it was written by a guy named Croye. What this tool does if you hit Analyze Scene File Textures is it gives you complete control over where your textures are pointed to, which are missing, and lets you easily see problems with texture paths. Um, now, I'm not going to go too much into this since it's pretty straightforward, but I modified this tool so that the target path defaults to your export path here in the LFA tools. Therefore, in our case, all we have to do is select our files and hit copy files. You see here, easy peasy, that's it. It's done. All our textures will be now in our export directory. Now, of course, if I try to load the model now, it still does, doesn't work. That's because we're missing Ogre materials. Here's where the material system I put into the LFA tools will help you handle everything you need regarding materials. So let's close this. The first thing to realize is if you're new to making artwork for real-time 3D, is that Maya shader networks don't have any meaning to real-time engines. Real-time shaders and pre-rendered shaders are different animals and in particular any type of procedural texturing that you might have done in Maya to, to avoid making a texture file is meaningless to exporters. That kind of stuff does not export. So there are a couple exceptions but the bread and butter of building real-time materials is based on displaying textures uh, with UVs and only very rarely something procedural, which in real time, anything procedural would be handled directly in a CG shader. And further, uh, real time shaders are not related to using shader networks from within Maya regardless. So as far as we're concerned, we're just gonna forget about the Maya shader networks. We only regard the material and the texture nodes connected directly to those materials with occasional exceptions. But this is the basic idea. So as far as the LFA tools are concerned, what gets exported to your dot material file is what's shown in the LFA GUI. You'll notice that when you select a material, there are several options for what you want this material to do. Each option here is a preset, or sometimes I call them material definition inside the LFA tools. So let's try some. You can see that for each one, the, uh, the controls are different. Okay, here's one with a problem. Uh, what's attribute error? This is no big deal, but has to do with the way that the presets work and trying to match what you see in Maya with what you're going to see in Ogre. This means that the preset is looking to grab a value from the Maya material that the Maya material doesn't have. It wants to translate something to the Ogre material that doesn't exist on the Maya material. For example, it says here that it's looking for specular color. Well, I'm using a Lambert to represent this Ogre material. Lambert doesn't have a specular color, so there's nothing to grab, and it's letting me know that right here. In this case, if we were to export right now, the tools would just use a default value for this instead of grabbing it from the actual specular color value of the Maya material. So if I change it, the material to blend, let's open our attribute editor and change it to blend. Blin does allow for specular lighting, so it's working now because it's now looking at the specular color of this Blin material to export the value into the Ogre material. 
So you can always fix these easily by using different types of Maya materials. And this is recommended to not export while an error is showing because fixing it means that what you see in Maya is more closely matched to what gets exported. So let's try it. Export materials. And there we are, looks great. Now as you get further along in your project, it's likely that these, these presets alone won't do the trick for the entirety of your project. You're going to end up needing to add custom ogre materials and shaders of your own and possibly manage how they're shared. So the LFA tools are designed to let you do that and still keep life easy for artists. So I'm going to detail a little bit about how you add your own. And by the way, I still recommend every artist know how to at least write fixed function materials. If you don't know what fixed function is, it's basically all materials that aren't shaders. You can look at the Ogre manual to learn more about fixed function. And actually, you can export these presets to see some examples, like this one right here. This is fixed function. And all the materials inside LFA tools are fixed function except the normal mapped ones. So at this point in the tutorial, I assume you have some understanding of Ogre materials and that you're now ready to have the LFA tools export your own custom materials. So if you open your scripts directory and go to where the tools are stored, you're going to find a directory called Material Definitions. This is where you'll find all the presets. You'll see that they match perfectly what you see in here. They're dynamically loaded. So if you want to add a new one, you just drop the new one in the directory. Let's take a look at one. Let's take a look at simple texture. These material definition presets are all just text files. Now each one is made up of two parts, this and this. I'll call the top one the header. This is basically the translator area. This maps what parts of the Maya material are to be translated into the Ogre material and how. And below, after the end here, you have the Ogre material. This is used basically as a fill in the blanks. You can see these match to these. So in short, up here you have the instructions for what to take from the Maya material and how the GUI should look like for this preset. And below you have the text of the Ogre material with keys that just get replaced with the values from the description at the top when it's exported. So let's take a look at an example. In this case there's a value I called emissive that's looking for a attribute RGB on the Maya material. In other words, it's looking for a real RGB value on the Maya material that's called incandescence. And you can see down here where it's told to paste that attribute when it's time to export. So here's another one called ambient that's looking for an RGB but with no attribute. This can be used when there's no equivalent attribute on the Maya material. In this case, ambient doesn't really translate because Maya doesn't have something that behaves as ambient value does in Ogre. This way, we just give the user who chooses this material an RGB slider that gives us a value. And it doesn't actually connect to the Maya material. And you can see that it's pasted here when it's time to export. And just like these, you can have artists choose ints or floats or texture files or whatever to insert into the material. Actually, in this case, you can actually see it's looking for a texture file right here to input into the color attribute, and it's pasting the file name right in here. See? Texture, texture. So to circle back to an earlier topic, this is also why you can get attribute error displayed in the GUI. Because if you specify this material definition to look for something in the Maya material that it doesn't have, it's forced to use a default value. And attribute error is warning the user that it's best to avoid using a default value. The final thing I want to cover is how to handle shaders within the LFA scene manager. Shaders can be a bit more complicated because they can consist of several files that link together and have dependencies that could be shared among each other. Well, we handle this in a very simple way. Let's take the normal mapping preset as an example. The normal mapping shader uses various files and images to work properly. If we look at the preset, here at the top you can see an include directive. All this does is that when you export this material, it tells Maya that you want these files copied to the export directory. And it grabs them here from the include directory which is right next to the material presets where the LFA tools are. This is an important feature because it allows artists to safely delete everything from the export directory. For example, if an artist chooses to use one shader but not another, 
uh, but then changes their mind as long as they are once in a while deleting everything out of the export directory and using file texture manager to copy the file textures here again the directory will stay clear of unused assets and files so let's test out this include directive by using the normal map preset I added a generic normal map here and I connected it through a bump 2D since in practice we might want to preview the normal map in Maya. So here's our export directory, let's clean it out. So let's use File Texture Manager to get our textures back. Copy files. You can see them here. Let's select our mesh. And remember that now we need to have normal mapping clicked since we're using normal mapping. Export it. Export materials. You can see everything was copied that was included by the preset. Now let's try it out in the Ogre Max viewer. And there you have it. So we have a shareable normal mapping shader thanks to the LFA tools.